Hi guys, let's discuss current affairs. Today's first question focuses on the recent killing of a very, we would say, unpopular African dictator. Unidentified Chad's president uh, who died in clashes with rebels in the third week of April 2021. Well, this is Idris Debi Itno. So, this man's dictator, actually he was a dictator and he, after ruling for 31 years, was killed by the rebels in his country. Who were the rebels and what's this about? Uh, and just before that, let me tell you a little about Chad. Where is Chad? This is Chad. Okay, this country is Chad. You see, this is entire, this entire thing, you can see that this stretch is all, you know, the Sahara. This is Sahara Desert. This is the world's largest desert, 92 lakh square kilometer big. It's not a small thing. That would be slightly less than, uh, you know, 10%, uh, slightly less than three times India's, uh, you know, area that's pretty large is 92 lakh square kilometer would be slightly less than the fourth largest country in the world the united states okay and uh, look at this now uh, this country you know uh, is right in the you know uh, just let me clear this this would help actually Chats capital is you can see here but it's way too small uh, the font is way too small i mean small here okay and is Germain. This is the capital of the country. Okay. Uh, the currency here is franc, ruled by France for a long time. France, um, you know, Belgium. These are the countries that ran large parts of this world here. I mean, Africa was colonized mainly by. You know, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, especially Belgium, uh, France, and of course you could say, you know, uh, Italy. But France was a major part here, okay, especially in West, Southwestern Africa. You know, this currently the president is, uh, what's his name, his son, this guy's son, Mohammed, Mohammed Devi. He's just 37 years old and he succeeded his father. Now, how was this guy killed and who was this guy? This is Idris Devi. Devi ruled between 1990 when he took power in a military coup dictator, my friends. He was here around, I mean, for 31 years, he ruled the country with an iron fist. He was a dictator of the worst kind. Thousands of people, of his countrymen, disappeared, simply disappeared into the thin air, you know, into the deserts of Sahara because of his extreme violence. He used extreme, an extreme degree of violence against his own countrymen. Now, there are multiple reasons for this. One, of course, to consolidate and perpetuate his hold on power, okay? Second was that he was an ally in, um, the West, so-called Western War on Terror launched by America in the aftermath of the September 2001 attacks in the United States. So when the US launched this war on attack, uh, it put allies around the world and it didn't see, you know, when I say put allies, it actually picked allies. And a lot of people, in order to get into the good books of the United States and best other Western countries like France, you know, Britain, what they did was they put their system, the administrative setup at the disposal of the West in taking on the local jihadist groups. And, you know, this chap, Idris Devi, did something similar. And this, you know, um, while the Western countries got what they wanted, that is use of the intelligence apparatus this, this man had against the local jihadists, you know, this guy got their support. And in the name of that support, in light of that support, what he did was that uh, he resorted to, to, you know, his, the, his use of violence increased. Violence against his opponents, against the country's general population increased. And this went unchecked. 
This also alienated a lot of people in the country. This alienated a lot of people. His son was very volatile. This, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Muhammad. I was writing, I think I wrote in the other screen. Yeah. Muhammad Devi. Muhammad also was pretty violent. Um, but in any case, my friends, uh, you know, um, his another, another of his sons was very, very violent. He died in a very different, in a very mysterious, you know, mysterious way in France, Paris. I keep track of all these guys, you know, um, in the sense that I keep an eye on how politics works, geopolitics works. This is my favorite subject. So, you know, um, he, this time around, you know, uh, on paper, he was, it was a democracy, but he did something remarkable. What? When I say remarkable, he did what every dictator has always done, rig the elections. Anyone who would stand against him in the election would have everything, you know, um, would have everything confiscated, would, you know, um, the worst that could happen to a candidate standing against this man was to die, was to be killed. But otherwise, there was extreme degree of punishment against such people. So recently, he had one election, the sixth time. Earlier, Chad had constitutional limits on how many terms the president could have, but uh, he did away with all those constitutional limits. He had been recently elected for the sixth time. And this was in 2021, early 2021. So this time, instead of giving a victory speech, he went to the north of the country here. He went to the north of the country where the, his forces were fighting against uh, a particular group of dissenters, not local jihadists or anyone, okay? The particular group of dissenters was called, uh, you know, um, what is that? Yeah, no. The Front for Change and Conquered in Chad. This is the English full form of what the locally was called FAT. Locally in French language, the full form, short form would be FAT. Okay. So the, these people, see when this guy, you know, Idris went to the local front uh, to, to, you know, where his army was fighting against these guys, you know, uh, dissenters, not a jihadists or anything. People, these guys were, they want, they say, our goal is to restore true democracy in Chad. Okay? We don't want dynastic politics. We don't want the dictatorial rule of uh, Idris Debi. So, these guys earlier worked in the system. They were in the system. They were, most of the leaders were in the army, actually. Now, they launched an attack against... Um, you know, Idris Debi when he visited the front, the battle front. And in that battle front, he, in that battle, he was sus he sustained fatal injuries and uh, from there he was brought to the capital, Enjama, and that's where he died, actually. People thought, now democracy would come. That's what people think always. You know, the dictator is gone, democracy would come. But then, power corrupts absolutely. Absolute power corrupts? Absolutely. So, his son, Mehmet, was propped up, was, you know, was chosen to replace Idris Debi. Mehmet was chosen to replace the father. And, of course, this was something that no one liked, no one in the country liked, but then you could barely do anything in this dictator family. They control the security forces, they control the intelligence apparatus, you know, especially within the internal, within the country. Everyone who would oppose would be subjected to torture, detention, arbitrary detention, no access to a fair trial. I mean, people would do this at the risk of bringing themselves, exposing themselves and their family to danger. And very few people have that courage, yes, my friends. Hmm? So, um, the West has had closed, uh, shut their eyes as usual because this guy was uh, an ally in their fight against the jihadists. That's about it, nothing else. That's what the West has always done. It's, you know, when they talk of human rights, they are human rights as long as it helps them. They, are, they close their eyes the moment, you know, 
the moment the rulers antique you know activities help those guys that's about it okay so this my friends uh, ladies and gentlemen is chart story guy killed when he, after very when he visited the battle front against the locals um, local what said dissenters we are you know, a group called the front for change and conquered in chart these dissenters launched an attack on the presidential camp there attacked this guy he was fatally wounded he was brought to the capital died there died there that's about it today his son um, his son mehmed ali um, is the ruler in charge okay he has promised uh, in a television television uh, speech uh, right after being put in charge of the country he said my goal is to restore democracy is to hold elections in about 6 months time brave words <laughs> but then that is what every dictator says okay so this guy is gone 31 years he ruled the country with with an with its you know you know if you look at all these countries if you look at africa today this country see earlier um, this country was ruled by dictator muammar gaddafi just to give you an idea okay gaddafi or qaddafi ruled this country between 1969 to 2011 imagine that this country algeria was ruled by abdul aziz i don't abdul fat butaflika abdul aziz butaflika butaflika he ruled the country from 1987 till recently okay till recently there was this was ruled by hosni mubarak 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 ruled egypt between 1981 to 2011 look at all the dictators everywhere dictators man everywhere i mean crazy crazy part of the world but then that's how the world is my friends it's uh, it's an evil place Uh, we are, you know, how chaotic our democracy is. It's a functioning democracy. At least we get a chance to elect the people we want. Yeah. At least we have the we are free to elect. You know, we can go and cast a vote. In these countries, there is no freedom. Yeah. So this was a dictatorship for a long time. You know, run by this man called uh, Omar Bashir Al Hussein. Yeah. then uh, you know uh, so was nigeria there was a dictatorship here car is still in you know central african republic is still you know what we say um, uh, a dictatorship okay so I'll let me tell you the rulers of this place is just the rulers okay you look at this uru kenya ta is kenyan president president of kenya john magufuli died recently he died uh, of covid he died co- of covid and he was a president of tanzania magufuli was president of tanzania and um, currently the country is run by this his vice president samia suluhu so the current president of tanzania is samia suluhu okay you don't have to know about these two guys i mean not very important my friends not very important so if you would look at um uh hamad model no not really important but i can tell you about um, you know um this since it's a neighboring country here okay um central african republic fostin the president is fostin achange Uh, what is his name? Tua Dore. This guy's president. This is the president's name. Okay. So, some places. I think uh, one of those spellings is that it is U A, which is okay. Don't worry too much about it. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah. Niger um, recently had a change in government. Uh, the president of Niger is Muhammad. Local version there. Muhammad. Bazu This is Niger This is Central African Republic Okay that's about it guys let's go from here
But uh, those of you who are new to this, I'll tell you just another one minute thing here. When you look at a map, it's very important to look at the boundaries. Okay, how these boundaries had come about. Uh, if you look at this North Africa, you see straight boundaries, straight, yeah, almost straight. Fair? Now you must see, this is intriguing, no? this is all intriguing. I mean, it has always fascinated me as to why is this like that. You look at this, straight lines. And in here, you find zigzag boundaries, small countries. This is the Gambia, look at this. This is within Senegal, this is a country called Gambia. Tiny countries here. No, why? And these are all of them have zigzag boundaries. Why? Well, the answer lies in the geography of these places. When the Europeans came here, uh, in this, you know, early in the what we say, you know, 17th, 18th, 19th centuries, uh, they found that uh, when they crossed the Mediterranean Sea in the middle between from Europe, basically, and they came to North Africa. They found that this was all desert. This is all desert, Sahara desert. And back in those days, there was no idea that a desert could have mineral resources, especially hydrocarbons, oil, gas, and all that. And there was no need for them in those days. I mean, you know, so no automobile, no industrial scale, you know, that we have to take. So those guys, the Europeans said, uh, rather than fight among ourselves, why don't we split, simply split this? So what they did was they took a map of North Africa like this, okay, un unmapped like this, uh, undivided like this, and took a pen, drew lines. You take this, you take that, you take this, I'll take that. Okay, this was ruled by France for a long time, Algeria, Libya, Italy. Uh, Egypt, Britain, right? This is how it is. This is all Ethiopia. This was ruled by Ethiopia for a long time, this part of the world. France and Ethiopia rule large parts of this. France and Italy, I'm sorry, not Italy, Ethiopia, Italy. So, you need to understand why. And now what about these small countries here? Well, uh, see, when Colonization expanded when these countries, European countries, began to occupy other parts of the world, small island places. The, Brit the Brits occupied large parts of America in the 16th century, uh, 15th, 16th, 17th centuries. What they found was that they did not have enough local labor. And even if they were, they weren't very trustworthy. And you know, the Europeans themselves would not work, would not do physical labor, except when they were extremely poor. So there was shortage of labor and to work in the sugarcane plantations, you know, sugar cane fields, tea plantations, cotton fields and all. So what the Europeans did was when they came here, they found that um, there was substantially large populations and there were deep mineral resources plus these are all forested areas. These are all deep forested areas, this area, you know, access to the sea, large populations, this is sparsely populated, large populations. And uh, they found that these people could be captured and used as slaves. And that was the fundamental reason, slave trade was the fundamental reason why the Europeans fought among themselves to occupy large, whatever they could occupy, you know, whatever territory they could occupy. So if I were fighting against you and you defeated me and occupied one stretch of land, all the people in that land would be yours. And this is what it was about. Trading in humans, slavery. It sounds like a bad thing, it is of course, but then that's what, what it was, my friends. And this is all desert, hello, this is all desert. Kalahari desert and all that. That's why it's straight lines again. And this is a large part, no one wanted. This is the, one of the most densely um, densely packed forests in the world, the equatorial forest here, this area, you know, extremely dense. Okay, spent a lot of time there, but good one actually. As part of the measures to protect the environment, which country has recently approved the creation of Ecocide Bill? Ecocide Bill, Ecocide, what is this? Side uh, relates to death, Eco, okay? Um, side is murder, killing, 
and eco environment ecology okay the killing of the environment to avoid the killing of environment you could write this then i'll tell you a few more things about those certain kinds of sites okay so please write um, ecocide bill by france ecocide law of france now it's a law law hmm? of france ecocide law of france uh, so we have um, first point to protect the environment to protect the environment to protect the environment and tackle climate change and tackle climate change and tackle climate change to protect the environment and tackle climate change next second point will apply to will apply to most serious cases most serious cases of environmental damage at national level at national level at national level at national level so this is what france has brought see these days uh, europe you know um, you know um, europe has uh, had an increasing focus on environmental protection see this is fundamentally you know a consequence of being developed okay um, being developed the idea is that now we need to address things that we could not in the past they when they were developing when they were using coal when they were using fossil fuels uh, to a large extent they still use these for their vehicles you know and on you know what's it cars and all that automobiles you know they did not have that kind of when they were using them they did not have that kind of focus on environment now that they are developed now they are moving away from fossil fuels they say that we need to protect the environment and they put a lot of pressure on us i understand completely that we need to protect the environment we need to tackle climate change but we also need to understand that the countries that have done this if the world is in this state of affairs where the climate change the average surface temperature has increased has increased and um, see global warming is the average sorry the increase in the average surface temperature as the average surface temperature has increased heat gets trapped here heat gets trapped when heat gets trapped it becomes hot when it becomes hot you know it leads to a lot of changes in we could say you know it 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 lot of changes in the ecosystem around us especially animal life yeah we can sit in an ac room like this but not animals see animals cannot sit and this also leads to a lot of damage when it comes to melting of ice caps as surface temperature increases you know ice caps melt when ice caps melt let's say take for example you know greenland the greenland ice cap uh, 95% of greenland's land area is ice it's permafrost permanent frost that is this ice has been this snow and ice has been there for you know for thousands of years like that if it would melt what would happen is there would be a level, there would be a rise in sea levels okay fresh water melts joins the sea water which is salty this would damage the life inside what about the living the marine creatures living in sea water around you know those places and when sea water melts sea water joins um, you know is 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 um, you know invaded you could say by fresh water what would happen is that it would damage the food chains complete food chains not only that surface temperature you know, not only that the sea levels will rise as sea levels rise it is believed that if the greenland ice cap would melt there could be a rise of about 18 feet in sea levels if 18 feet even it's 10 feet think about all the low lying areas what about islands like maldives where the highest you know uh, peak is about 700 feet the highest point on the islands of maldives is 7 feet that's the highest point 15 sorry 15 feet that's the highest 
but average is 1.5 meters that's about five feet uh, you know six feet that's bad so somewhere a lot of these low-lying countries will get submerged and not just that it would also damage indian coastline what about cities like bombay um you know um calcutta what about madras trivand kochi people will have to move in inland uh, this would put pressure on the resources in you know the land will get submerged people will come in move in and this would put pressure 40% of bangladesh would disappear into sea so you can imagine the consequences but all these are to a large extent a result of what the west had done over the last 300 years okay so it's very easy for them to blame us hey china and india are um, the biggest polluters i understand that and we should tackle this i'm not taking any excuse i'm not making an excuse you know that we should not protect them we should protect them right? but this is technology is expensive clean technology is very expensive so it's pretty okay for countries like france to blame us but then they have already done that they have already come to a stage of high development we are still there i mean long way off okay so that's a little about this eco side you see the word side a side would mean kill so you have regicide the killing of a king regicide the killing of monarch regicide then you have yuxori yuxori side the killing of a wife then you have homicide killing of a human being that's murder hmm? then you have you know um, matricide the killing of a mother you have patricide killing of the father i mean just the word you side you add to the root word patra relates patra relates to mother, uh, father matra relates to mother yeah, okay that's how it is, comes about so i mean there a lot you can we can learn see when they say infanticide infanticide the killing of an infant i sorry yeah feticide the killing of a fetus hmm learn root words rps it's got root prefix suffix methodology fetus you know infant that's how words come okay uh you look at this word german germany the but there is one element called germanium what is it germanium it comes from uh, from france comes francium from france comes francium i think we already discussed the leaders of these countries in the past but just let me point out once again for the reference of those who just would be attending one of my sessions for the first time my session for the first time um germany has a president whose name i have never shared with you okay germany has a president and they have a president in the nominal is you know i want to say um um uh, rubber stamp you know in the, in the nominal role only the president's name is walter uh, sorry frank walter frank hyphenated name walter stanmier ha huh. stanmier this is the right spelling frank walter stanmier the chancellor of germany the who in whom the real executive power rests um is like the prime minister of india chancellor is angela we normally say angela this is angela angela merkel hmm brazil's president is the trump of brazil uh, named jair bolsonaro france we know emmanuel macron Emmanuel Macron UK Boris Johnson Boris Johnson United States Joseph Biden Bhumidhar Burman who passed away recently had served as the chief minister of Assam for about uh, for just a you know um, a couple of months you know um, if i'm not wrong he was the prime he was the chief minister between april may 1996 that's it he was a stopgap arrangement 
who is the current chief minister of assam assam's current chief minister is uh, sarbanand sonowal hmm? elections are happening in west bengal for as of today mamta banerji is the chief minister of west bengal mamta banerji मेघालय कॉन्द्रेड सांगमा कॉन्द्रेड सांगमा एंड बिफोर दैट वी हैव मणिपुर बीरेंद्र सिंह बीरेंद्र सिंह ओके मिजोरम पू जाम था Stefano Tsitsipas defeated Andre Rublev. The V in the end of this this one here is pronounced with an F. Okay, Andre Rublev in the Monte Carlo final to reclaim his Masters thousand title. This tennis tournament was held in France. Usually, it's held in Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo is the capital of Monaco. You want to know where is Monaco? This is this. This separate country. You see this on the border between Italy and France. You see the tiny here. This is Monaco. This part where my cursor is, where I put a red dot, that is Monaco. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, um, let me tell you about Monaco. You could write this Monaco. The capital is Monte Carlo. Area is 2.1 square kilometers. Second smallest in the world. Second smallest. The smallest, as you know, is the Vatican City, which is in the city of which is in the city of Rome. Vatican City is in the city of Rome here, and this is, you know, what we say. Um, this is uh, the second smallest place in the world. But you know, um, why it is the second smallest place in the world? You also need to understand that with a population of thirty-eight thousand. 38,000 population. This is the most densely populated country in the world. Most densely populated. Most densely populated country in the world. 19,000 people per square kilometer is what it means now. Okay. Now it's one of the most ultra chic C H I C places in the world. This is one of the most expensive places in the world, my friends. Uh, it's run as a, it's a small kingdom actually, and uh, its its uh, uh, ruler is a guy called Prince. Ruler of Monaco is Prince Albert the Second. Albert the Second. When जब हम नाम का उच्चारण करते हैं जैसे यू रीड लिख कर दिस प्रिंस एल्बर्ट सेकेंड वी राइट लाइक प्रिंस एल्बर्ट सेकेंड बट वेन वी रीड द नेम इट्स प्रिंस एल्बर्ट द सेकेंड शुड कम ओके द सेकेंड शुड कम वेन वी राइट वी डोंट हैव यूज द द सेकेंड बट वेन वी रीड द नेम इट्स द सेकेंड क्वीन एल्जबर्थ द सेकेंड लाइक दैट ओके नाउ दिस टूर्नामेंट वॉज हेल्ड on you know in a place called um, by the way just this guy belongs to greece world number 5 and this is andrey rublev he belongs to russia okay russia yeah and this tournament uh, was held in a place called rock room cap martin Rock Brun Cap Martin. That's the name of one place. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. That is where the tournament was held. It's actually in France, pretty close to where Monaco is. Okay. Um. Why don't we look at the leaders of these countries? Spain, you know. Okay. Let me write in bringing capital Madrid. Um. The press, the prime minister is. It's a constitutional monarchy, so there is a ruler here, a monarch, but he is not important. Prime minister is Pedro Sanchez. Pedro, not Pedro. Pedro. 
France, you know, Italy, uh, you know, uh, it's a new prime minister there, Mario Draghi. Mm, Singapore, very tiny country, Lee Xian Lung. Lee Xian Lung, that's the name of the Prime Minister of Singapore. Hmm. Let me take you to Europe, some part of it. You get this. This is all. Uh, hey, uh, you see this. Okay, let me bring in something nice. Just um, whenever I see a map, I, I, get it. I generally tend to give a little more. You see this here? This is Croatia in yellow. Okay. Now, Croatia has this tiny stretch here, very thin stretch here. You see these islands here? These are all tiny islands. There are about 79 islands here and 500 islands. Islands are tiny islands. Hmm? Yes, they look like dots. Dots, just dots. I mean, you can see that, you know. These islands are called Dalmatia. You have a dog type, white dog with black spots. That's called Dalmatian after this region. Aha. Okay, so the Dalmatian dog, white dog with black spots, is named after this region called Dalmatia in Croatia. I just saw them, that's I just, you know, it's a wonderful thing. And this is Russia, yeah, Russia. Russia, but you see this, you see this here, it's written Russia. This stretch of land is also owned by Russia. So Russia shares boundaries with Poland also. Otherwise, it would not normally share boundaries between Poland because Belarus would come in between. Hmm, Belarus, direct boundary. Here, Russia, Belarus, Poland. But here you see this. Hmm? Lot to you just look up a map. You can learn a lot of good things, man. Okay. There we go, guys. Some other time I'll tell you a lot, a little more. Raul Castro had recently confirmed to pass on his communist party leadership in the new generation. Raul Castro is from Castro, Spanish. Raul Castro is from Cuba. This is Cuba. This is Cuba. Uh, let me tell you a little more about this part of the world. And you see this Cuba, Jamaica. This is, uh, you know, this is, you will find all these countries here. This Jamaica, the capital Kingston here. You have, you know, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, I mean, St. Kitts in Navies, Antigua and Barbuda, yeah, Bahamas, Thoda Upar Rega, Bermuda, yeah, uh, Puerto Rico, this owns, this is a part of the United States. Haiti is a separate country, it's a very poor country. This is um, some, you know, what do you say, uh, Dominican Republic. That's how they pronounce Dominican, it's Spanish Portuguese. So these are all Spanish places, typically traditionally Spanish and some part British. Let me tell you something about this. But before that, Cuba. This is Raul Castro. These are the Castro brothers. This is Fidel. And this is Raul. This is the last story I will tell you today. Okay. Uh, maybe I will tell you this story in the next class because I think we are running short on time. A lot to discuss. But anyway. Maybe other stories I'll postpone to the next class, but let's look at this. These two guys had run this tiny country of Cuba since 1959. Okay. In 1959, Fidel Castro, 1959, Fidel Castro turned Cuba into a communist country, into a communist country. He under, you know, he led a revolution here. He defeated the ruler called Fulgencio Batista. You don't have to know this name, Fulgencio Batista. Now, <clears throat> Fulgencio Batista, my friends, um, was a pro-American guy, and these were communist, anti-American fellows. And they were backed by the USSR, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, communist superpower. Okay, so this happened in 1959. The communists took control of the island of Cuba, this island here. How close is this to the United States? You see this, the nearest portion would be about, you know, this entire stretch would be about 160 kilometers. Just 160 kilometers away from the American mainland. Think about it. So, um, 
there's something here that these guys turned this into a communist backyard i mean in a communist country there is only one party so commun cuba became a one party state the communist party state then you know uh, they put in place a socialist economic system where all the resources of the country were liberated and nationalized liberated first from people and nationalized in the name of the government i mean in the name of common ownership they took away everything that private people had owned i mean private wealth of people and they nationalized it and said this is owned by the government that's it no private ownership yeah nothing was allowed everything was controlled by the government so this is a long story i'll uh, tell you this story uh, maybe in the next class uh, i'll also bring in christopher columbus in the next class uh, today's class would i would like to keep uh, short and i'll take this question bring it to the next class i'll tell you a story about a little more about this part of the world okay in the americas actually north america south america i hope you would love that story because i personally love the story very much See, this is Russia. You see, this is Russia. I mean, look at this. Not, I mean, such a narrow thing. This is Denmark. This is the Arctic Circle. The Earth narrows at the top, isn't it? Yeah. See, a while ago we saw Iceland. You see this Iceland? Yeah. Now you see Iceland is here. Yeah. You see the western part now of that. I'll bring to you a little more in the next session, but for now, Cuba, my friends. If you would know about Cuba, Cuba's capital is Havana. Because I have already told you one story today, so one story per class is a good number. Havana. Okay. Next, that's the capital. Um, Miguel. Canal. Diaz. is a president the president the currency is peso the currency is peso okay okay from which country will india procure the s400 triumph sa21 growler considered the world's best air defense system uh well we are buying this from russia but the americans aren't happy because america says you buy our system why we need to go there but um this is the world's best air defense system and america has imposed sanctions against turkey um in a different way for buying this from russia turkey had purchased this system from amar and from russia americans didn't like it till then russia was uh, sorry turkey was a part of the f35 fighter jet aircraft development project and uh, turkey was thrown out by the united states for buying this and some sanctions were imposed the americans have told us also don't buy from russia we will give you whatever you need but india wants to chart its own policy and the current government is is insistent on buying this it's a good system actually it's an air defense system someone would fire a missile it can intercept that yeah and it can fire its own missiles uh russian prime minister is mikhail mishustin this is a russian prime minister okay and the currency is ruble world's biggest country by area 1.7 crore square kilometers 1.7 crore square kilometers pretty large man hmm um russia is india's russia is the biggest supplier of weapons to india india's biggest weapons supplier russia you could write this also Okay. Second is United States. Um, Israel Prime Minister, the capital is official is Jerusalem. Accepted universally is Tel Aviv. Prime Minister is Benjamin or Benjamin local name, Benjamin Netanyahu. Okay, 
and um, the president, uh, let me give you the name of the president, I usually don't give the name of the president, Ruben Rivlin. So this guy is the president of Israel and this is the prime minister. Sorry, there's no short full stop here. Okay, and the currency of Israel would be what? Uh, new shekel? Yeah, new shekel. The Union government has recently cleared ROPAX, which is a roll on roll off passenger jetty project on Dhamra River in Seoul, so in Odisha. I took this map from the handle, the Twitter handle of Mansuk Mandavia dot in, you know. This is the Twitter handle, Mansuk Mandavia at Twitter, you know. But I also took it from this website actually, Mandavia, Mansuk Mandavia dot in. In fact, I took it from the website. Um, what is this? If you want to write, you could write this. Ropax project on Dhamra River. Ropax project on Dhamra River. Okay. Dash connects, connects or will connect, will connect. Kani Nali, Kani Nali on the on the northern bank, northern on the northern bank of river dhamra river dhamra with 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 talachua on the southern bank on the southern bank of the same river on the southern bank of the same river Southern bank of the same river. Full stop. This project, this project, comma, this project, comma, implemented under the, implemented under the Ministry of Ports. I'll write it here. Ministry of Ports Ministry of Ports Oh ho 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 it's going everywhere man <laughs> Ministry of Ports Oh let me just yeah technology works in way ways we don't really understand technology uh, yeah uh, this project comma implemented by the ministry of ports ministry of ports shipping and waterways comma will will facilitate here they are mentioned here will facilitate safe travel safe travel safe travel of passengers and vehicles passengers and vehicles vehicles is vehicle the H is silent vehicles comma reduce travel time reduce travel time from six hours to one hour from six hours to one hour from six hours to one hour and boost and boost local employment and business opportunities local employment and business opportunities local business and employment opportunities 
See, the distance between Talachua and Kanninali is just about 7 kilometers. But what's happened is that uh, there is no government jetty or anything, boat or anything, yeah? Government boats, freight and all that. So this has pushed people to use, you know, uh, you know the vehicles, the boats and, you know, steamers of locals, which are not safe. Okay, they, you know, you know how it works actually. So the government has brought in now a particular system, roll on, roll off jetty, where, you know, people can go into boats and everything, and they are, they are equipped with the best safety equipment at the same time. Well, people can move faster now. Faster things would mean that you have employment opportunities, you have better business growth. Okay, early if it had taken you seven hours to reach the market, now it would take you one hour. It had, earlier it took six hours, now it takes one hour. This helps you spend quality time on more productive things. And this is good for everyone. Think about it. 70 years down the line of independence, we are doing it now. But still we are doing it. That's important. People are benefiting, nothing like it. Um, okay, Chief Minister of Orisha, Naveen Patnaik. Naveen Patnaik. Bihar Nitish Kumar, Nitish Kumar, Jharkhand Hemant Soren, Sikkim Prem Singh Tamang, also called P dot S dot Lote. Prem Singh Lote. Hmm. With which country has India signed an agreement on cities combating plastic entering the marine environment? Germany. We signed this agreement way back in 2019. Okay. Controlling plastic waste entering marine environment. So some part of it that was signed recently. So I would suggest you write a few bits about this. If you have some descriptive test anywhere, this might just help you. Okay. About marine environment, marine pollution, stuff like that. So please write marine litter. Marine litter. Litter means kachra. Marine litter threatens, threatens, threatens. Marine litter threatens marine ecosystems, marine ecosystems, marine ecosystems, comma, impact, impact fisheries, impact fisheries. Come on, tourism, 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 and and employment and employment. Tourism gets impacted. Everything gets impacted. Employment. Full stop. It also impacts public health. It also impacts public health. through ingestion of microplastics microplastics through consumption sorry my in through ingestion of microplastics Consumed by, consumed by marine creatures, marine creatures, marine creatures. So if a fish would eat micro plastic and we eat the fish, we would eat the plastics. Yeah. Next, last part. About 20%. About 20% of 
of all plastic of all plastics of all plastics enter oceans enter oceans enter oceans dash long dash about 90% of such of such plastic wastage of such plastic wastage is contributed is contributed by the by 10 of the world's most polluted rivers by 10 ten 10 ten of the world's most polluted rivers dash dash continue dash ganga and brahmaputra are among those 10 rivers are among those 10 rivers next we discussed this in the past we discussed this particular question or oh, this particular question so i'll just touch and go okay give you basic information which nation top the economist intelligence units 2021 inclusive internet index now inclusive internet index uh, based based on affordability relevance relevance in the sense that is there local content on that or is it all english kind of stuff okay so affordability accessibility you know what we say um uh, relevance as i mentioned relevance okay and of course um, the top 5 countries in the world you could write top 5 you could write this title inclusive internet index 2021 right one sweden rank 1 sweden see whenever you write ranks whenever you write ranks okay 1 2 3 there should not be a dot after this when you put a dot it becomes a serial number so no dot okay 1 2 3 okay. so one you please write one sweden two two united states three spain s p a i n spain four what is that country yeah australia yeah four is australia yeah yeah for australia five hong kong hong kong hong kong for all practical purposes is treated as a separate nation even though it's a part of china so sweden united states yeah uh, what we say number 3 spain number 4 australia number 5 hong kong okay um india rank 49 India rank 49 India rank 49 China rank 39 we are just writing rank rank okay China rank 39 next last one um last rank 120 last rank 120 Burundi this is a country in Africa It's a very tiny country Burundi in the heart of Africa next to Uganda Rwanda you will find Burundi Rwanda hmm which nation along with India participated in Khanjar so a two week military exercise with a focus on counter terror drills while the answer ladies and gentlemen gentlemen is Kyrgyzstan this is Kyrgyzstan okay Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. These five countries were once part of the Soviet Union. You know, these five states. So was Russia. This is Azerbaijan. Yahan pe hai Georgia. Iske paas mein hai Armenia. They were all part of the Soviet Union. Okay. Now, um, just write Kyrgyzstan. 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 the capital bishkek you see this is bishkek i write it here bishkek capital is bishkek 
Hmm? The president here is Sadir Chaparov. Yeah. And the currency is SOM. Currency is SOM. Mm. Currency is SOM. Next. One more country here. Yeah, Chalte. Turkmenistan. This is a dictator, run by a dictator. The capital is Ashkaba. Now we are discussing Turkmenistan. Ashkabat. The president's name is Gurbanguli Birdi Moha Medal. One word. Mukha Medal. In some places you may not find this key. Which is okay, don't worry. And you know, put my son, currency is manat, manat, manat. This guy is a dictator, madman. Before him, there was a guy called Sapar Manat Niyajov. I mean, that guy was really mad. He, I'll just tell you one mad thing about him. He replaced the country's calendar with a calendar that was named after he, himself, his family members. There was one month named after his mother. And he wrote one book, uh, Niyajov had written one book called Ru Nama, Longings of the Soul, Ru Nama. This was compulsory reading for anyone who wanted a driver's license. <laughs> how, how is, what's the relationship? No clue. That's it. So I spend a lot of time learning about such people, mad men. The world is a mad place. And it's good to learn about mad people because they run the show. We don't. Hmm? So that's about it, I guess. Do we need to know about Kazakhstan? It's a criminal country. This criminal, you know, Kazakhstan, the world's largest landlocked country world's largest land locked country its area is about 27 lakh square kilometers that makes it the world's biggest land locked no access to the sea country okay this caspian sea is an inland sea so we can't really say it's uh, you know uh, a water body it does not lead to, it's an inland sea you see okay this is this is um, what is mentioned here Astana is the capital? No. Now it's called Nur Sultan. Why Nur Sultan? Because this is the name of the former president. Nur Sultan Najarbayev. Criminal. Criminal weavers. He's still there. He's still there. He is the chairman of the Supreme Council of Kazakhstan. He is Chamcha. He is now the ruler. Kasim Jamat Tokayev. Don't worry. One is enough. I just wanted to tell you, look, this is how the world is. It's a crazy place. M. Narsimhan passed away recently after battling COVID-19. Narsimhan, uh, Sri Narsimhan was considered the father of banking reforms in India. Banking reforms. He was also the RBI governor. RBI governor in 1977. Just for about six months, he was the RBI governor. May to November. Hmm? RBI governor. So, that's about it. See, in banking reforms, what banking reforms? He advocated the entry of private sector in banking okay this was in mid in the early 80s and he brought in the idea of why don't we have private banks remember this had come just after you know a few years after we had nationalized six more banks the first nationalization of indian banks happened in 1949 i'm talking a big round 1969 14 banks were nationalized another six were nationalized in 1980 so 20 banks were nationalized in two installments 1914 in 1969 six in 1980 and um, soon after that, this committee led by Sri Narsimhan had suggested we should let private sector come in and we should have adequate, you know, we should also have asset recovery companies. S certain structures were, you know, mentioned by him how we should have and all that. He also said that we should have regional rural banks, you know, being pushed further. They were already there, being pushed further. Hmm? Unfortunately, he passed away of COVID-19. 
Which company has kicked off the second edition of the annual summit for small and medium enterprises called Sambhav and launched the 250 million Sambhav Venture Fund? Amazon. Is that Amazon? So, what is this Sambhav function? You can write this Sambhav Venture Fund, Sambhav Venture Fund, um, dash, three goals, three goals, Sambhav Venture Fund, three goals. Three goals. Um, one, digitization. Digitization of small business. Digitization of small business. Second point. Agri tech innovations. Agri tech innovations. Agri tech innovations. To raise farm productivity, to raise farm productivity, agri tech innovations to raise farm productivity. Third one, health technology, health technology for quality, for quality. Universal health care, health technology for quality universal health care. Okay. See, majority of sellers on Amazon are small and medium enterprises. They make a lot of money because of Amazon, they are now becoming, you know, they're doing better. Earlier, they had customers only, in a, they had access to customers only in a local area. Now they have access to customers all around. Yeah, that's how things have changed. Um, Amazon is uh, the world's largest internet company, you could write. World's largest internet company. Turnover last year was $389 billion. <laughs> $389 billion. Mm. It also generated 3 lakh jobs since two th January 2020 in India. January 2020, that's huge number. Okay, um, you see, when I say jobs, including delivery boys and all that, because it's all still money. Hmm? Head office, Seattle, Washington, Seattle, United States, and affair. Seattle, United States. Um, chairman, Jeff Bezos. Andy Jesse, new CEO, you could write new CEO. Hmm. Do we need to know about any other company? Chalo, I will tell you a little Google. Google owned by Alphabet. Owned by Alphabet. There is a company called Alphabet, the parent company of Google. Okay, Alphabet, owned by Alphabet, headquartered in Mountain View, in a place called Mountain View, in the American state of California. American state of California. Both Google and Alphabet have the same CEO, Sundar Rajan Pichai. Sundar Rajan Pichai. Okay. Uh, Facebook. Facebook headquartered at Menlo Park. California, United States. Mark Zuckerberg is a CEO. Hmm. Flipkart owned by, you could write, owned by Walmart. Walmart. Owned by Walmart. 
CEO is Kalyan Krishnamurti. Kalyan Krishnamurti. CEO is Kalyan Krishnamurti. Walmart headquartered in a place called Bentonville. Okay, let me clear this first. Okay, uh, not necessary. Bentonville, Arkansas. Bentonville, Arkansas, United States. CEO Doug or Douglas McMillan. You could write one more point about Walmart. World's biggest private sector employer. World's biggest private sector employer. It, all, it has more than 22 lakh employees. You could also write one more thing. World's biggest company. World's biggest company across industries, across sectors. It's the biggest company in the world. World's biggest company. World's biggest company. World's biggest company. And um, Um, what turnover is turnover was 519 billion dollars last year 519 billion dollars it's a departmental store okay alibaba uh, headquartered in hangzhou china current ceo daniel Zhang. Burli Natarajan has recently been reappointed as an MD and CEO of uh, DCP. Development Credit Bank. That's a full form. Development Credit Bank. Development Credit Bank is Mumbai based bank. It's a Mumbai based bank. Hmm? City Union Bank, it's called CUB. You see this? C U B CUB. You could write Dr. N. Kamakori. Dr. N. Kamakori. CEO, Dr. N. Kamakori. Federal Bank. Sham Srinivasan. Sham Srinivasan, then what is that? Dhanlakshmi Bank. Oh, it had a problem recently. Sunil Gurbakshani was the MD CEO. Worse, the bank wanted to give him an extension. The RBI said, No, you cannot give him an extension. So the RBI stopped the bank from giving Sunil Gurbakshani an extension as the MD CEO of Dhanlakshmi Bank. So they appointed recently a new guy. J.K. Shivan. J.K. Shivan. Bandhan Bank. Uh, this is uh, headquartered in Calcutta. Bandhan Bank, um, Chandrasekhar Ghosh. Chandrasekhar Ghosh. Chandrasekhar Ghosh. Hmm? Chandrasekhar Ghosh. Then we have Ah, oh, who is the new Prime Minister of South Korea? It's mentioned there, Kim. This is South Korea, which is south of North Korea. Okay, I know it sounds very weird, but that's the answer. That's the geographic location. Only land boundary it has is with North Korea. Okay. Uh, South Korea's capital is Seoul. Seoul. What is it? Seoul. The E is silent. It's pronounced Seoul. The president is uh, Moon J In. 
the president of south korea is moon jae in moon jae in hmm okay from there you see this is uh, north korea south you know south this is japan uh, taiwan tiny taiwan this is vietnam not in full and you know shown not in full here um, okay um, this is the country of philippines okay if you look at um, the choices yoshihide suga is the prime minister of japan the prime minister of japan the prime minister of japan nam nam okay me she is the prime minister of vietnam the prime minister of vietnam vietnam here this is the president of vietnam president of vietnam sai ing wen this is where she is president of taiwan president of taiwan there are a lot to discuss about these countries but we don't have enough time for all that hmm chali I brought in this question when it was just for fun. It was not a part of the original set of questions. I just brought this in fun, fun. Um, which of the following contains the sacred Gayatri mantra? The answers mentioned there: Rigveda Samhita. Um, just a couple of things about Gayatri mantra. If you would want to know, um, you could write first about Rigveda Samhita. Um, comprises ten mandalas. Comprises ten mandalas. And thousand twenty-seven suttas. Some people say thousand twenty-eight. Don't worry. Rigveda comprises ten mandalas volumes and thousand twenty-seven suttas. Okay. The word Veda. The word Veda. Next point. The word Veda comes from the Sanskrit root Vid, which means knowledge. That's why Vidya. Hmm. The Sanskrit root with. Next. Gayatri mantra. Gayatri mantra is found in. Is found in. Mandala three. Mandala three. Mandala three. Dash. Come. composed by composed by rishi vishwamitra i don't write it with an h rishi vishwamitra dash dedicated to dedicated to savita dedicated to savitra the name of the name of the rising and the setting sun the rising r i s i n g rising and the setting s e t t i n g the setting sun s u n the name of the rising and the setting sun dash named after continue the dash named after why is it called gayatri mantra named after the syntax in which it is written the syntax in which it is written named after the syntax in which it is written okay let me tell you this see om bhur bhuvasah when we read recite this the sacred gayatri mantra तत् सवितर वरेण्य तत् सवितर सवितर इस भगवान सूर्य ओके एंड टिपिकली द गायत्री मंत्र इज इनवोक्ड एट इदर सनराइज और सनसेट सम पीपल डू इट इन द आफ्टरनून आल्सो दैट्स व्हाई इट्स सवितर बिकॉज़ दैट्स द नेम ऑफ भगवान सूर्य एट सनराइज एंड सनसेट 
Now, most of us would think that it is named after Gayatri Mata and all that. Yeah, Sarasthi Mata, it's Savita, Suri Bhagwan. And some of us would think that it is dedicated to, it's, it's, it's uh, called Gayatri because it's dedicated to Gayatri Mata and all that. It's called Gayatri Ma, you know, Mantra because of the syntax in which it is written. It's a very short poem. It's a sacred mantra. You know, see, I'm not a Hindu. I'm, my name is Bharat C. Jain. I'm not a Hindu, but I want you to know something very common. Okay? This particular, you know, um, you know uh, in the Rug Veda, there are these 1020 Sansuktas, songs of praise to God. Hmm? All of these are written in certain syntaxes like Pankti, Pankti, you know, Pankti is like sentence. Pankti, Anustum, Tristum, Gayatri. Gayatri is a kind of syntax. And in this, this particular mantra is written in Gayatri syntax. That's why it's called Gayatri Mantra. Okay. A lot of good stuff to learn. I took this question, brought in this for light-hearted stuff. So that we would get to know something that we have taken for granted. Something new about something that we have taken for granted. Okay. Upanishads, my friends, there are four Vedas, Rug, Sama, Yajur, Atharva. And uh, Upanishads, there are 108, and these are books on Indian philosophical systems, rituals, and all that stuff. You know, for example, from the Mundak Upanishad, we have adopted India's national motto. What is India's national motto? Satyameva Jayate. It comes from the Mundak Upanishad. India's national motto comes from the Mundak Upanishad. You can say Mundaka. Mundaka. Hmm? Um, Brahad Aranya Kuparishad is where the idea of transmigration of soul is discussed, was discussed for the first time. What is it called? Transmigration. That the Atma moves from one body to another after it leaves the body. The physical existence ends. The Atma moves from this body to another body. That's called transmigration. So this was discussed for the first time in Brahad Aranya Upanishad. I'm fascinated with all these things. I'm sure some of you do, uh, you know, you do get fascinated, are fascinated with this, and it's a wonderful thing. Learn, my friends, learn, learn, spend some time every day. British International Bank has teamed up with the Habitat for Humanity International to help microfinance institutions uh, deliver housing loans to low income families in rural and peri um, you know, uh, urban areas of Bangladesh, India, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Well, 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 the answer is already mentioned, so I'm not really going to discuss this. But since the question is clear, um, we're just going to talk about Asian Development Bank. Okay? ADB, it's called Asian Development Bank, headquartered in Manila, the capital of Philippines. Okay? Uh, the spelling is right, Philippines. Manila, Philippines. The president is Masat Masat Sugu Asakawa. He is from Japan. Masat Sugu Asakawa. Just write the heads, nothing else, okay? You can't cut them. World Bank President David Malpass. David Malpass. America, Asian Development Bank, Mar, no sorry, New Development Bank, Marcos Troijo, Brazil, Asian Infrastructure De Investment Bank, Jin Likan, China, European Central Bank, I'll just drag the name here. Christine Lagarde. Christine Lagarde. She's from France. You would want to know the head offices? No problem. I don't have a problem. Well back, Washington DC. Washington DC. New Development Bank. Shanghai. This is spelling error. <laughs> it should be Shanghai. Shanghai. 
Asian Infrastructure Bank in Beijing. Asian Development Bank, you mentioned. This is in uh, Frankfurt, Strasbourg, Fra Frankfurt. Next. Now, RBI has named a six member committee under the chairmanship of former executive director, RBI executive director to review dash uh, regulations and asset reconstruction companies. ARCs, um, these are companies that buy bad loans, buy bad loans, NPAs from banks at a discount. They buy, asset reconstruction companies buy bad loans from banks at a discount, at a discount. Now, say, let's say a bank had lent 100 rupees. It stands no chance of getting back this 100 rupees. Then it approaches an asset reconstruction company. It tells it, okay, we are willing to sell it for 70 rupees. This RBI's RC would say, or uh, ARC would say, no, no, we will pay you 50 rupees. Chalo, they come to 55 rupees. Bargain and everything, 55 rupees. Now, it becomes, see, the loan is transferred from, the NPA is transferred from the bank into the books of ARC. Now, the ARC would try to recover this money from the lender. From the the borrower. If it recovers 60 rupees, it makes a profit. If it recovers less than 55 rupees, its cost price, it suffers a loss. But when the RBI, when the, sorry, when the commercial bank sells the NPA to another uh, to, to an ARC, asset reconstruction company, its books become clean. It suffers a loss. Still, the loss is you know not as big as the complete write-off. Got it? And that's Sudarshan Sen, who is going to head this? Okay, let's not discuss all these things. Mahesh Kumar Jain in the end, RBI Deputy Governor. As per the State of the Global Climate 2020 report, Cyclone Anthon of 2020 had resulted in a $14 billion economic loss in India. In this context, this um, organization uh, WMO had published this report. Okay, WMO. World Meteorological. Meteorological. Logical. Well, meteorological organization. World meteorological organization. Head office Geneva. Head office Geneva. Its secretary general is a guy called Petteri Talas. Petteri. Dallas, who is from Finland. I think, yeah, he's from Finland, yeah. He's from Finland. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've been discussing uh, WHO, IMF and everything. Enough, yeah. Name India's first digital asset management platform uh, recently launched by Niti Aayog CEO Amitabh Kant, Digibox. You could write... Uh, you know, Digibox dash digital file storage, digital file storage comma storage sharing and management platform and management tool. Original file storage, sharing in management tool. See, if you keep everything online, there's always a danger, but there are certain cloud accounts. Digibox is basically a cloud account. So you can put digital stuff in this. You can save this. I mean, it's cloud is difficult to break into. So it's always a safe thing. I have all stuff in the cloud account. Where? No one knows. <laughs> Yeah, so the idea is it's, it's, it's good to safely put away your stuff, especially education certificates and everything. Mm, there's always a danger. See, whenever you get a certificate, any kind of certificate, a bill, receipt, always take a photo of that. It's always a good thing. Mm, and it's very important, mail it to yourself if you don't have a cloud account. Dash is the risk of default on a debt that may arise from a borrower failing to make required payments. Credit risk. You lend, that's called credit risk. Okay. I think we will discuss in one of these classes credit rating. I'll bring to you credit rating. 
non banking finance co companies can accept or lend you public deposits for a minimum period of 12 months and a maximum of 16 months so one year is minimum maximum is 5 years so public deposit minimum is one year you can keep your money with an nbfc for a minimum of one year but for a maximum of 5 years in the Union Budget 2021, Nirmala Sitharaman, Finance Minister of India, announced that senior citizens over the age of 75 years will be exempted from filing income tax returns. That's there's a very small population of this. Yeah, there's nothing to discuss here. Which public sector unit had won the Excellence Award in the Corporate Social Responsibility Domain at the Confederation of Indian Industry? ITC Sustainability Awards 2020. ITC in the past had a full form, Imperial Tobacco Company and then Indian Tobacco Company. Now it uses no full form. Okay. The Confederation of Indian Industry and ITC Sustainability Awards um, in the CSR category, the Excellence Award was won by NTPC, National Thermal Power Corporation. Okay. And this NTPC is uh, headed by Gurdip Singh. Gurdip Singh he is the Chairman MD. Gurdip Singh. Bharat the Dynamics Limited, you don't read the name of Siddharth Mishra, Commander Siddharth Mishra. Uh, IOCL is Indian Oil Corporation, India's biggest public sector company. Uh, Shrikant Madhav Vaidya, Shrikant Madhav Vaidya, Shrikant Madhav Vaidya. BHEL is uh, Bharat Heavy Electrics Limited, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, headed by Nalin Singhal, Nalin, yeah, Nalin Singhal. ONGC, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, which is basically you know owned by HPCL, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited. Um, there is no full-time chairman, but recently one director level person, Subhash Kumar, had been given additional charge of chairman of ONGC. Okay. Which nation will host the Global Media and Film Summit in 2021? This is it, India. Indonesia, capitalist Jakarta, President is Joko Widodo, world's largest archipelago, world's largest archipelago, archipelago is a group of islands, group of islands, world's largest archipelago, hmm. It's also the world's largest island country. It has more than 16,000 islands, yeah. Philippines, capital is Manila. We mentioned it a while ago. ADB, remember that? Yeah. The president is Rodrigo Duterte, Spanish country. New Zealand, capital is Wellington. And the prime minister is Jacinda Ardern, Canada, Ottawa, Prime Minister is Justin Trudeau, which lending institution has entered a memorandum of understanding with the Indian Green Building Council to promote green buildings in the country, HDFC. Housing Development Finance Corporation, the, you know, um, MD is, MD is Renu Karnad, Renu Karnad, okay, CEO is KK Mistri, KK Mistri. Access Bank, Amitabh Chaudhary. Amitabh Chaudhary. ICC Bank, Sandeep Bakshi, you know the name. IDBI Bank, Rakesh Sharma. I think, yeah, fine, Rakesh Sharma. Last. Hey, uh, a while ago we had the Confederation of Indian Industry, CII, 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 my friends, is Confederation of Indian Industry. Its president is Uday Kota, Uday Kota, CII, President Uday Kota, and Uday Kota is the chairman of 
Kotak Mahindra Bank is the CEO of Kotak Mahindra Bank. Okay, and ITC, the company's CEO is Sanjeev Puri. Sanjeev Puri. Hey, that's about it. Very exhaustive session. Thanks for being here. Next class, Cuba, and a little more about that part of the world. Thanks for being here. Stay curious.